Have you ever wondered what really goes on behind the chocolate you eat every day? That sweet, soft, perfectly molded bar that seems harmless and simple. Do you know the true story behind every bite? Get ready to discover a hidden, mechanical, precise and surprisingly mysterious universe. Because not everything sweet has a smooth journey to your shelf. Today, we will walk through doors that rarely open. We will visit factories where the smell of cocoa ferments in the air and delve into metal corridors where temperature and pressure are not only controlled, they are decisive. But be careful. This is not just a video about chocolate. It is a journey through time, chemistry, engineering and the silent backstage of an industrial secret that keeps a multi-billion dollar market running tirelessly. Every day, behind very high walls, stainless steel chambers and constantly rotating machines. From the humid jungles of Central America, where it all began with ancient civilizations that worshipped cocoa, to the immense tunnels of modern factories that produce tons per hour, you will discover that chocolate is not born sweet. It is molded, refined, calculated, and often with more rigor than steel. Do you know what it takes to transform a bitter fruit, which grows hidden in the twisted trunks of a fragile and demanding tree, into one of the most desired products on the planet? Would you know how to recognize the sound of a refinery in full operation? Would you know how to pinpoint the exact moment when chocolate reaches its perfect crystallization point? Or perhaps you have no idea that, before reaching you, this sweet treat has passed through intense temperatures, crushing rollers with tons of force and conching tanks that do not stop operating for more than 72 hours straight. In this video, we will reveal what many companies prefer to keep secret. Let's show you what happens when the lights go on inside the factories and engineers press the buttons that activate the beating heart of production. Automated systems that receive tons of raw cocoa, transported in hermetically sealed silos, sterilized, and treated with precision. Chocolate, contrary to what it may seem, is anything but simple. It is the result of an exact balance between time, temperature, pressure, ingredients, and decisions made by experts who cannot afford to make mistakes. Now, imagine the following scenario. A huge room without windows, where everything is done under computer control. The room temperature is adjusted to the nearest tenth of a degree. Robotic arms move in perfect synchrony, as if dancing a silent and lethal choreography. Ultra-sensitive sensors automatically adjust the roasting time according to the exact type of cocoa bean, detecting even variations in humidity invisible to the human eye. And all of this is monitored by operators who follow strict protocols, where a single error can compromise the quality of an entire batch valued at millions of rees. Curious? You should be. Because what you are about to watch will change the way you view chocolate forever. It is not just a dessert. It is a product of science, engineering, history, and most importantly, a carefully orchestrated industrial process where every second counts, every gear plays a fundamental role, and each ingredient goes through dozens of steps until it becomes the sweet treat you know. And after understanding all this, you may never be able to look at a simple chocolate bar the same way again. What really happens inside these giant factories? What have you never known about the chocolate you consume? And why do certain steps of this process remain hidden from the general public? hidden behind confidentiality agreements, industrial patents and secret internal protocols. Get ready. The truth begins now. For centuries, tropical regions with warm, humid climates have been the ideal breeding ground for one of the most valuable raw materials in the food industry, cocoa. Among these regions, the territories where ancient civilizations such as the Mayans thrived stand out. These people not only inhabited one of the most fertile and favorable areas for growing cocoa, but they were also pioneers in its cultivation and use. Even today, these same regions continue to play a fundamental role in the global supply of cocoa beans, accounting for a significant portion of world production. 
Surprisingly, although technological advances have radically transformed the food industry, the beginning of the chocolate production chain still preserves practices that date back to ancient times. The delicacy of the cocoa tree imposes limitations on the mechanization of this initial stage. Cocoa pods, for example, do not spontaneously detach from the tree. They do not fall naturally when ripe. This means that harvesting still relies almost exclusively on manual labor, where each fruit is carefully removed from the trunk with the help of simple, sharp tools, such as machetes or special pruners. It is a time-consuming activity that requires precision, patience and, above all, experience on the part of the rural workers. But the effort does not end there. After harvesting, each pod, which can contain 20 to 50 seeds, needs to be opened individually. Inside, there are the precious cocoa beans, still wrapped in a white, viscous, sweet pulp with a sticky texture and fruity aroma. This mucilage, although it seems like just organic residue, plays an essential role in the subsequent stages of production. For this reason, the beans are carefully removed in order to maintain their integrity and preserve the natural properties that will be activated later in controlled processes in the food industry. At this point, what we have in our hands is still a long way from resembling chocolate as we know it. In order for cocoa beans to acquire their distinctive characteristics, such as aroma, color and flavor precursors, they must undergo a fundamental process, fermentation. This is an extremely sensitive biological step, carried out immediately after harvesting, which consists of placing the beans in wooden boxes specially prepared for this purpose. These boxes are often covered with banana leaves, a traditional resource that helps maintain the ideal temperature and humidity for the proliferation of microorganisms necessary for the process. Fermentation can last between three and nine days, depending on factors such as the variety of cocoa, local climate conditions, and the flavor objectives set by the purchasing factories. During this period, several chemical and biochemical reactions occur that eliminate impurities, break down unwanted compounds, and promote the formation of the first flavor and aroma precursors. The white pulp that covered the beans gradually dissolves, releasing acids that penetrate the seeds and activate a cascade of internal transformations. At the end of this process, the beans begin to acquire their characteristic brown color and begin to give off an odor that is vaguely reminiscent of the final chocolate. Once fermentation is complete, the beans move on to the next stage, drying. Now, the priority is to reduce the internal humidity of the beans, which are still quite moist, and to prevent the proliferation of fungi and bacteria during storage and transportation. This stage can be carried out naturally in the sun or with the help of controlled thermal ovens. In more traditional methods, the beans are spread out on large tarps or wooden mats and are turned periodically to ensure even drying. Sun exposure, in addition to removing residual water, helps to further intensify the flavor compounds formed during fermentation, initiating the sensory profile that will be developed in later stages. With the beans dry, the internal humidity reduced to safe levels and the flavor beginning to form, the material is ready to begin its long journey to the industrial processing units, true technological factories where cocoa becomes chocolate. In the factories, the beans undergo rigorous quality control. Before any processing, a sample is taken and carefully evaluated. Specialized technicians cut the beans to check for color, texture, uniformity and defects. Any batch that does not meet the established standards is discarded or redirected to secondary uses. Only approved beans proceed to the next stage, final industrial drying and roasting. Even after the initial drying process on farms, it is common for the beans to undergo a second stage of controlled drying in industrial facilities, where moisture is reduced from around 7% to as little as 1%. This precise dehydration takes place in sophisticated equipment that uses circulating hot air with automated temperature and time control. Precision at this stage is crucial to ensure the conservation and stability of the beans during storage and grinding. After this stage, the beans are ready for roasting, one of the most important parts of the entire chocolate production chain. 
It is during roasting that the famous Maillard reaction occurs, a complex chemical process that transforms amino acids and natural sugars into hundreds of new aromatic and flavor compounds. This reaction, which is also present in the caramelization of meats and in the crust of bread, is responsible for developing the deep and striking flavor of chocolate. Depending on the temperature applied and the exposure time, it is possible to obtain different flavor nuances, ranging from fruity and floral notes to more bitter and earthy tones. The roasting temperature usually varies between 120 degrees and 160 degrees C, and the time can range from 15 to 45 minutes, depending on the desired profile and the type of chocolate to be produced. This meticulous control is carried out by food engineers and specialized technicians, who monitor the data in real time through digital panels. Small variations in the parameters can result in drastic changes in the final flavor of the product. For this reason, this step requires state-of-the-art equipment and a lot of expertise. When performed well, roasting transforms the raw cocoa beans into nibs, small, crunchy fragments with an intense aroma and flavor. These nibs are then ground in a process that releases the cocoa butter and forms a dense paste known as cocoa liquor. From this point on, the chocolate begins to take shape. But this is a topic for the next chapters of our exploration into the fascinating universe of the industrial chocolate process. After the cocoa beans have undergone the roasting process, in which complex chemical reactions develop the characteristic